Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to replace the front rotors and brake pads on your Saab 93. I was originally planning on making this video in Swedish with English subtitles since I'm Swedish, the car is Swedish and we're in Sweden. Uh, then I figured I'd save myself the time and energy of actually having to write them. Uh, so here we go, it's all in English for you. Um, bear in mind though, my English is a little bit rusty, but as long as you can understand what I'm saying, we should be good. Alright, cool. Um, there's lots more information if you scroll down, otherwise let's get cracking. Alright, best of luck to you. Okay, first we have to remove the wheel, using a floor jack and whatever size wrench that fits your bolts. In this case, it was a 17mm socket. Make sure to loosen them slightly before jacking up your car and then remove them completely once the wheel is off the ground. Now I cannot stress this enough. Please make sure to use a jack stand as you really don't want the floor jack to fail most likely causing serious damage to yourself or your car. It's a really easy thing to do compared to having to live with the consequences if you get injured or covering the costs of your broken car. Also very important, before you start you need to unscrew the lid of the brake fluid reservoir. Alright, if you look at the back of the caliper, there are two little rubber knobs with a plastic cap covering the opening. Take the little caps out and you'll find a 17mm allen screw underneath each one. If you hadn't guessed it already, you obviously need to take these screws out. In my case, they came loose quite easily, but I imagine that may not always be the case. So use a high quality tool with a longer shaft to get enough momentum and then unscrew them completely. They can be a bit tricky to get out all the way, but use your imagination and you should be fine. Here's the first one. And the second. Okay, next thing we need to do is get rid of the dodgy looking spring here. Grab your flathead and simply pull it out like so. Now the caliper should be loose, but it's still held in place by the brake pads. Be careful not to damage anything, so if you need to use force, take a piece of wood or something and hold it in between the hammer and the caliper. You may have to fiddle with it for a bit, but don't worry, it'll come off eventually. You can even use the flathead again, like shown here. Now. After taking the worn out brake pads out and before replacing them with the new ones, we need to push the piston back inside the caliper. This is the reason we took the lid off the reservoir before. If we hadn't done that, the pressure inside the brake system would prevent this from doing so. The easiest way of doing this is probably by using a ratchet bar clamp like you see me doing here in the video. Be patient though, as it is a rather slow process and this segment of the video is sped up by a factor of 10. To avoid loose parts from being damaged, I used some steel wire which I threaded through a small hole in the caliper and tied it up on the spring coiled over the shock absorber. This also helps getting it out of the way which makes the next few steps a lot easier. On the back of the rotor, on the caliper mount, there are two 18mm bolts that need to come out. Now these are probably very hard to unscrew unless you have the proper tools and something like a metal pipe to lengthen the handle of whatever tool you're using. I really wished I had a socket wrench here which would have made this step so much easier. But I had to make do with what I could find in the garage. After a while though, success. And the caliper mount, or whatever it's called, is detached.
The actual rotor itself is mainly held in place by the wheel pin bolts, but it's fixed in position by a small 5mm allen screw that you need to take out as well. This probably isn't very hard either, but as always, use decent quality tools to avoid damaging anything. Now here is where things went south for me, but hopefully you won't have the same problem. In my case there was a lot of corrosion built up between the rotor and the base plate it's mounted on, which made it extremely hard to get off. I used a local brand of rust solvent similar to WD-40 and a hammer for quite a while. Then I tried a big flat head through the ventilation holes to try to bend it loose, followed by a pin punch and a hammer again. As you can see, this went on for quite a while as I went back and forth through the different tools I had close at hand. Since we're replacing the rotor here, there's really no need to be gentle, but be careful not to damage any other parts of your car. Sometimes it helps to wait for a bit while the solvent takes effect, so this may be a good time to get a cup of coffee or something before going at it again. Finally, I went to get a slightly larger sledgehammer, which, after a bit of work, did the trick. I found out at this stage that the rotor had actually cracked through the ventilation holes, which was a bit scary. But that also answered the question why the brakes seemed to pulsate when the pedal was pressed down. Luckily, they didn't break before I had them replaced. Pun definitely intended. This would be a good time to pick up the steel brush and clean off any excess dirt or rust from the caliper mount. This mainly to make sure that the pads can move unobstructedly in the grooves and thus work smoothly. It's also a good idea to wipe the rotor mount plate clean, and basically give everything a rundown while you have it taken apart. I even used a bit of anti-seize to prevent them from getting stuck again. I don't know if this is standard procedure if done by a proper workshop, but I did it anyway. If you disagree with this, or anything else in this video for that matter, please drop a line in the comments section, preferably together with an explanation as to why. Thank you. Alright, time to break out the new rotors. They normally come covered in a layer of oil or grease. My guess is to prevent it from corroding during storage or transport, but I could be wrong. Either way, it should come off before we attach it to the car. I used brake cleaner from the same brand that made the corrosion solvent mentioned earlier, but I'm pretty sure whatever alcohol you have access to will do the job. Except maybe scotch, but I'm guessing you don't want to use that anyway. Rub it off with a clean cloth, and we should be good to go. Note that the threaded hole for the guide pin should line up with its counterpart on the disc, and push it in place. I used anti-seize on a fixating screw as well, but again, I'm not sure whether that's appropriate, so look it up if you feel the need to. Or don't bother and just do what I did here. Screw it in and tighten the bolt. No need to use excess force here or you could risk breaking your tools. Like this. Okay, onto the brake pads. Clearly I needed to replace mine, as the old ones were worn down to the metal back plate. Not good. Now, again, I hear different things about what to put on the back of the pads to keep them from squeaking. Apparently there's a special brake pad grease that you should use. But from what I understand, copper paste does the job too, which is what I used here. Spread it out evenly on the contact surfaces, but there's really no need to use a lot of it. Just enough, like so.
Next up, grab the tube of copper paste once again and apply some in the grooves on the caliper mount where the brake pads are going to sit. This also to make them move smoothly and not get stuck over time. Be careful to not use too much as you want to avoid it getting between the pad and the rotor which could reduce stopping power and would be potentially dangerous. As you've probably already noticed, the inner and outer brake pads are slightly different. Pick up the inner pad, meaning the one with a metal spring on the back, and snap it into the caliper. After that, pick up the caliper mount, and make sure you have the mounting bolts and socket wrench close at hand. Hold it in place and proceed to the next step. Put the bolts back in the holes and don't forget the little 90 degree angled metal plate that goes in between the bolts and the mount. I actually did put some anti-seize on these bolts too, to prevent them from getting stuck. Keep in mind though, that from the factory these bolts have Loctite on them to prevent them from coming loose. Now I'm pretty sure that won't happen anyway, but if you're unsure, just skip that step. Or even apply red Loctite, which is what should have been on there from the beginning. Please note that I'm not sure about what torque to use when tightening any of the bolts in this procedure, so by all means google it if you feel necessary. Personally, I go with a bit of old-fashioned Fingerspitzengefühl, on with a metal pipe and tighten hard, like so. Finally, take out the other brake pad and put it in place in the grooves on the outside of the disc. Next, remove the steel wire, or whatever you use to tie the caliper up, and carefully slide it back into position. Then grab the pin screws, clean off any dirt or residue if you haven't already, and feel free to put grease or anises on these as well, as I can't imagine that doing any harm, as long as you tighten them properly. Reach around the back of the caliper and slide them back into their little holes with the rubber collar. It could be a bit tricky to line the holes up properly, but it should be fine. You can't fail here as there is no wrong way to put it back together, even if you have to fiddle with the positioning for a little while. Use your 7mm allen key to tighten the screws. And again, I'm not sure as to what the correct amount of torque is here. But use your best judgement, or if you're anxious, remember, Google is your friend. There, all done. Don't forget the little spring before putting the wheel back on, as I did here. What would I do without video editing software? Anyway, no big deal if you do, just remember to put it back. Honestly though, I'm not really sure why it's there in the first place, but it's probably important in one way or another. Use the flat head if you're having trouble putting it back in place. There, getting close to finishing now. Catch your wheel and put it back in place. In this case it was spring and therefore time to put the summer tires on, so I did that. I'm pretty sure most of you already know the final steps, but I'll run you through them anyway just in case. I normally put a little bit of copper paste on the pin bolts to keep them from seizing, but that's totally up to you. Tighten them a fair amount, but not too much before dropping the car back down on the ground. Remove the jack stand and whatever debris under the wheel that may damage the tires. This is where I realized I'd forgotten to put little black plastic caps back in the rubber collars on the back of the caliper. 
Luckily, it's quite easy to reach them, even with the wheels back on. Lower the jack slowly. And tighten the wheel bolts. Now, after repeating this whole process we've just gone through on the other side of the car, screw the brake fluid reservoir lid back on. Close the hood of the car. You'll have to excuse the horrible condition my car was in at the time of shooting this video. It had been standing outside in the snow all winter and was not a pretty sight at all. Now, get in the car, but do not start it. Instead, pump the brake pedal a couple of times to get the pressure up in the system. Then start the car and drive off into the sunset. Or garage. Or in this case, to the nearest car wash. Job well done. Congratulations.